love when she fly back. <laughs> Howdy folks! Recently I've had some questions regarding some of my 300 blackout loads which were dubbed the name Bunny Farts due to their extremely quiet nature and as my buddy Evan would add, the smelly burnt trail boss powder smell. Since YouTube has deleted some of my previous Bunny Fart videos and user Hickamfield requested a lost and found video, I decided it was time to make a video where I talk about the Bunny Fart Evolution. For those of you who are newer to my channel or don't know, I've been casting and reloading ammo for the 300 Blackout cartridge for several years. In fact, I used to reload for the old 300 Whisper cartridge before the 300 AAC Blackout cartridge became Sammy Spec and Mainstream. Back then, I used to cut down 223 or 556 brass and neck it up using the 300 Blackout dies because commercial brass was not readily available. I've been a pretty big fan of the cartridge for several reasons. One, I believe it is a very efficient cartridge for subsonic ammo. Much more efficient than the larger cases like 308 Winchester, etc. which have much more wasted case volume. With the larger cases and running subsonic ammo, you end up with a lot more airspace and this causes a lot higher extreme spreads between shot to shot. Number two, it's a great cartridge for shooting cast bullets which in turn makes it super economical to shoot. Since you're not pushing the bullets super fast, it just seems like the cartridge was made to shoot cast bullets. Since you can load cast bullets at subsonic speeds, you can shoot steel targets at distances closer than 100 yards with red dotted AR-15s or other semi-autos. I've kind of found it interesting that we build these self-defense weapons with uh, red dots but then when it comes time to practice them, you either have to shoot paper or you have to shoot steel at the recommended distance of 100 yards or more when you're running a 5.56 or something of a faster nature. With 300 Blackout, you can shoot steel at the closer distances which the guns were made to shoot at. Number four, with silencers, you can load very, very quiet ammo, which makes for fun subsonic plinking. It makes it great for kids or new shooters or people who want to plink quietly. <laughs> Did you shoot the red one too? I shot the blue one. Oh. And one of the things about silencers and the 300 blackout cartridge, which I love, is that you know usually when you take kids shooting they have issues wearing the little ear plugs like the foamy plugs that you stick inside your ears because you never know if they totally have it inside the right way and then when you try and stick the big ear muffs on then it prevents the kids from getting uh you know because they have smaller shorter heads then it prevents them from getting a proper cheek weld with the rifle so using silencers you just throw the eye protection on you're good to go Number five, the cartridge can be chambered in short barrels or long barrels, bolt guns, brake action guns, or semi-autos in AR-15s or other types of semi-autos. My early 300 Whisper 300 Blackout guns consisted of more expensive AR-15s and Remington 700 bolt action rifles. I found myself always tinkering with different bullets loads, etc. to see which bullets function better than others at supersonic velocities or subsonic velocities. Cast bullets, jacketed bullets. The 300 Blackout was kind of like my playground or sandbox of experimentation. Endless 30 cal bullets to play with. At one point, I found a CVA break action rifle, the Scout, at Gunny's, one of my favorite local gun shops. I believe it was only 200 bucks or so. I figured a break action would be an awesome option to add to my 300 Blackout collection, and since it was so cheap compared to the other rifles, it would be the perfect gun for testing new loads. I'd be better off breaking that than if I'd broken one of my fancy bolt guns or AR-15s. Keep in mind, back then, a 300 Blackout AR-15 upper used to cost around a thousand bucks or so. 300 Blackout wasn't mainstream or cheap. 
We didn't have a Davidson Defense or Bear Creek Arsenal or any of the other cheap AR-15 options available in 300 Blackout back then. As I played around more and more with my break action CVA 300 Blackout rifle, I realized the versatility of a break action versus a semi-auto AR-15 or even a bolt action. I could use pretty much any 30 cal bullet in the break action because it didn't have a magazine that it had to fit in for overall length, nor did it have a feed ramp that you had to work with for feeding up the ramp and chambering. I played around with several different bullets and even cast a 32 cal semi wad cutter using my NOE 32 cal mold. And I sized those bullets down to 311 and later powder coated them yellow and had my kids draw little faces on them, just like Lego heads. And I called those my Lego head loads. I experimented with the heaviest bullets I could find, around 250-ish grains, as well as the lightest ones I could find, which were the little pea shooter loads, which were they're around a 40 or 44 grain powder coated round ball. I then began to appreciate the lightweight subsonic bullet loads. I bought a Lee soup can bullet mold. That's the nickname, but it's a little uh, 113 grain little stubby bullet, but I almost wore it out in the little two cavity Lee configuration. And the Lee, those little Lee two cavity molds are not made of the highest quality and they have a few irritations such as the sprue cutter coming loose and just the screw as the hinge pin and no locking screw to hold it in place. But anyways, it was really good and I enjoyed using that bullet. I loaded that one with fast burning pistol powders and they were extremely quiet. I nicknamed those little bullets loaded with trail boss powder, my original bunny farts. They were super quiet and super fun to shoot. I wanted that same or same-ish design, but with a plain base and ended up getting a similar bullet made by NOE, which cost more, but had five cavities and it was made with much higher quality. And plus with five cavities versus two, you sure make them a lot faster. I shot several of those bullets and loved it. But one day, as I was picking up another order locally from NOE, I was looking through the infamous drawer of used molds and I noticed an air rifle mold in the drawer. It was the 308-135-RN. It was designed by a guy named Quackenbush. And I asked Al if I could buy it and try it out in the 300 Blackout. And so he said, sure, sold it to me cheap since it was used. And I figured that if I powder coated the bullet, it would add the necessary thickness to make it work in my 300 blackout break action. I also thought that with the shape of the bullet, it would be able to feed in my bolt action rifle as well as be a little bit more aerodynamic for lobbing them at longer distances. I ended up loving this bullet and it soon became my new bunny fart load. I did, however, want to make a few changes to the bullet design. I wanted to remove the boat tail because with bulk casting and powder coating, I noticed that the boat tail didn't always come out perfect. You know, you sometimes get those little powder coat boogers on when you're just tumbling them and then baking them in a mesh tray. Whereas the plain based bullets always had a nice sharp plain base once run through the sizer, even when powder coated in the bulk basket way. Many people don't realize it, but the base of the bullet you're is super tree, important like, as it can be compared perhaps to the rudder of a boat, which steers the whole bullet. If you have a crappy base, your bullet Got will fly it. crappy. <laughs> Anyways, I went back to Al and showed him a few modifications to the design, including a slight change to the nose and O-drive, increasing the driving band diameter from 308 to 310, and removing all grooves to create a grooveless design. I also wanted to remove that boat tail and added a plain base but also asked for gas check option two for pushing them as supersonics. And for those of you who are familiar with the Eagle Eye shooting channel, that's one of his favorite bullets in the 300 blackout. He has the gas check version and he pushes those at decent and respectable velocities and good accuracy. With the added changes, these became my new bunny fart loads. With a case full of about 4.2 grains of trail boss powder, these bullets seem to work great. They are super quiet, they fly accurately enough, and they smack the steel hard enough to let you know you've hit it. The recoil is very minimal, almost non-existent, 
so little that it makes it a great cartridge and loads for kids or new shooters since you don't have to wear hearing protection with the silencer and there's virtually no recoil. I enjoyed this rendition of the bunny fart load so much that I ended up getting a pistol length barrel from match grade machine for my Encore chambered in 300 blackout. With an EOTech on top, the kids and whoever shoot it just have a blast. Of all the bullets that I cast, that's including the 500 mag, 9 millimeter, just 45, 70, all the ones that I cast and love, I probably shoot more of these bunny farts than any other type of ammo that I make. I try to cast at least some of these little 135 grain NOE bullets during all of my casting sessions because I seem to run out of those more often than I'd like. It seems like I'm always short on them. What's funny is that it doesn't matter if they're new shooters or experienced shooters, the bunny fart load seems to be the favorite of everybody. In fact, I think about 10 of my friends and shooting buddies have bought single shot rifles after shooting mine with the bunny farts. And as a funny side note, we always start our shooting outings without hearing protection with the bunny farts and the bolt or break action rifles. And after we're done at the end of a shooting day, it seems like we always pull out those same 300 blackout rifles with the bunny farts and take off our hearing protection and just sit down on the bench and do some relaxed, quiet shooting and end up shooting just a few more plinking shots with the bunny farts. So to summarize, the bunny fart load for the 300 blackout cartridge might not be a viable hunting load. It might not have the highest ballistic coefficient for long distance shooting. It might not have much energy and it might be slow and drop like a rock. Although we sometimes have those friendly 500 yard, I'll bet you lunch, I can hit the target first, friendly competitions, but it is one of my favorite and funnest loads to shoot and definitely one that I shoot a whole lot of. If you haven't done it, go and try out a lightweight coated cast bullet in 300 blackout and let me know what you think. I'm pretty sure that you'll have some fun. Anyways, catch you later and thanks for watching. Oh, and if you Am want I? to have sore arms, yep. go and have a single shot duel on a dueling tree with a buddy.